I grew up in a small town north of New York City. I had the benefit of an all-American childhood. I was a Boy Scout. I played in the Little League. I proudly marched in the town parades every 4th of July. And along with all my other classmates, every day in grade school, I swore the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, something you did in the 1950s. And it was an extraordinary experience. One day, on the school playground, a group of kids taunted me. Your father is a communist. I went home and asked my father why they would say this. He was, after all, a Marine veteran and a Republican lawyer, and I knew he was no communist. So he sat me down on the arm of his chair, and he told me a story that I'll never forget. A Democratic candidate for school board in our town had been viciously smeared in the town paper for being, you guessed it, a communist. This was the heyday of Senator Joe McCarthy, and political smears like this were being made all across America. It was a, a difficult time, but my father decided to do something extraordinary. He told me that he didn't know the candidate, and he didn't agree with many of her positions. He was a Republican, and she was a Democrat. But he wrote a letter to the editor of the paper, which was widely circulated, defending her and criticizing the McCarthy smear tactics that were being used against her and saying these were polluting and poisoning the political atmosphere all across the country. In the war, my father said, we fought for liberty and justice, but now it's time to stand up for them here at home. Fast forward. We have a president today who acts and sounds like Joe McCarthy, smearing minorities and immigrants, pushing prejudice, and turning people against each other by stirring up fear and insecurity. We have a political climate in which those who stand up against racism are attacked. And we have a president who blames the victims and accuses the media of spreading what he calls fake news. Now, watching my father stand up against Joe McCarthy inspired me to become a human rights lawyer and a diplomat. And I did. And over time, I worked as he did to defend liberty and justice. Today, we have an even more dangerous version of McCarthyism, and it's even more urgent to stand up against it. Now, over the years, I've seen many kinds of injustice. All of us have. And I've learned sometimes the hard way how to respond. As a teenager, I saw the brutality, the brutal reality of racial segregation. As a young lawyer, I saw anti-war leaders and civil rights leaders attacked for being unpatriotic enemies of the people. And when I was a diplomat, I saw the slaughter of Rwandan uh, Tutsis and Bosnian Muslims by the, ra by the racist leaders of their own countries. Now, when we are confronted by extreme injustice like this, it's very hard to know what to do. Life gets in the way. We think that we're too busy. We don't think that we can really make a difference. And we worry about the impact this getting involved might have on our careers or our families. Um, or we might get attacked by extremists. Or like my father, we may be smeared in our own hometowns. But standing up is important. Sometimes, in fact, often, we can have the support of others when we stand up. When I defended the anti-war leaders who were attacked by the Nixon administration, I had the support of the ACLU. And when later, in a court case, I took the deposition of President Nixon 
I had the backing of a federal judge who had reached the conclusion that President Nixon had violated the constitutional rights of American citizens by wiretapping his political enemies. So we can often get support for standing up. But standing up is complicated. We need to understand those with whom we disagree in order to be effective in defending the principles for which we stand. Now, later in my career, just recently, I was the president of an international university in Hungary. And I faced a hostile government. And in order to defend the academic freedom of the university, I had to engage in a long and difficult dialogue with this government, constantly searching for some small areas of common ground when I knew we disagreed about almost everything else. Today, we need to enter into a similar kind of dialogue with our political opponents in order to discuss the differences we have over such fundamental issues as liberty and justice. Now, over the years, I learned the hard way that standing up means never giving up, even when you fail at first. When I was in the government, I worked with others to try to get the US to intervene to stop the killing in Bosnia and Rwanda that I talked about earlier. As the highest US human rights official, I traveled to the killing fields and described what I had witnessed as a genocide. I was criticized back in Washington, and I was told that I had gone beyond the US policy at the time. And I was sidelined from further policy discussions. But I didn't give up. I knew I was right. And by persisting, I was able to help establish an international criminal tribunal that brought some of the people involved in the genocide to justice. And I became the first US official to reach some of the survivors of the genocide in a town called Srebrenica. And their horrific tales of what had happened to them, which they told to me, ultimately helped change the policy that I was seeking to change all along. Now, I know and I've learned that small actions, all of us think about what small actions we can take. Small actions can make a huge difference. Robert Kennedy once gave a famous speech about confronting injustice. He said, each time a person stands up for an ideal, they send forth a tiny ripple of hope. And crossing each other from a million different centers of energy and daring, these ripples create a mighty current that can sweep down the highest walls of oppression. Now, each of us has the capacity to send forth a ripple of hope. And these ripples will define who we are and what we can do together by standing up. Václav Havel, the famous Czech dissident who was later the president of his country, was once asked how it was that he and other dissidents were able to confront all powerful regimes when they had no power. His answer was very simple. He said, we did what we could. And when we did what we could, we found that we could do a little more. So we did a little more. Now today, that promise of liberty and justice that we so loyally recited every day in grade school in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag is under attack from all quarters. It's time to stand and defend it. Standing up means voting. Voting this year, next year, voting in all elections. It means getting others to vote. It means persisting. It means protesting. It means never giving up. And it means, above all, what Havel said, which is doing what we can, and then doing a little more, because that's how we will change the world.
Thank you. Thank you.